abiding the Son of the Soul and the Spirit, and the joints and the marrow, and they created the thoughts and intents of the heart. All scriptures God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or the woman or God, woman of God can be thoroughly furnished for every good work. The Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, we are resuming our study of 1 Corinthians. We're now in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. Um, uh, um, this morning, we're going to look at verse 15 through 18. And then I'm going to let you guys be dismissed. So just uh, as way of review, uh, we started out in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, looking at um, uh, Paul addressing or answering the question concerning uh, eating food, sacrifice, or idols. There were some believers who were eating food in an idol's temple. They were, uh, even though they knew that there is only one true God, they were still um, eating meat, sacrifice of idols in the pagan temple. Um, and there were other um, believers who were weak in their faith. And by observing uh, uh, more knowledgeable believers eating uh, food or meat offered to idols, uh, it tend to cause them to be led back down to a pagan lifestyle. And so Paul, wanted to encourage these Corinthian believers to, uh, to uh, forego their freedom to eat all meats for the benefit of the weaker believer. And we looked at how sometimes we are to uh, forego doing certain things if it means that it will strengthen or help another believer's relationship in love. But now Paul have been... Um, dealing with in chapter nine, he'd been dealing with the issue of his right to receive material support from the Corinthian. He was an apostle and he had the right to receive material support from the Corinthians uh, um, because he's an apostle, he's a minister of the gospel and the Corinthian had been blessed by his spiritual gift. And, and as a result, uh, uh, it was his right to receive material support from those whom he had been a blessing to spiritually. However, in verse 1 through 14, we saw that Paul did not use his right uh, to receive material support or financial support uh, from the Corinthian. And he's, he, he's going to explain why he did not uh, receive that support. So after arguing for his right to the Corinthian material support in verse 1 through 14, Paul would now proceed to argue that he has a right to give up his rights. So he had the right to receive material support he brought out in verse 1 through 14, but now he's going to argue that I have the right to give up my right of uh, for material um, support. In other words, Paul did not accept their support, even though he had the right to do so, he gave up that right. And then he's gonna show why he gave up that right. And he had the right to give up his right. So Paul will explain, explain in these next verses of, in, in chapter nine, he will explain that he gave up his right to receive uh, support from the Corinthian for a reason. Starting at verse 15, let's read verse 15 through 18. But I have used none of these things. In other words, I have not used my right for material support from those of you whom I have blessed spiritually. He said, but I have used none of these things and I am not writing these things so that it will be done so in my case. He said, don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you that I have a right to receive financial material support from you. I'm not saying these things to you because I'm trying to uh, um, uh, get you to support me. I'm not saying this to get you to, to uh, support me materially. He said, for it would be better for me to die than to have any man make boast, my boast in empty boast. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, 
for I am under compulsion. For woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. In other words, Paul is saying that whether I receive your financial support or not, it is my responsibility to preach the gospel. That is the work that God have called me to do. That is God's work. And, I, and then he say in verse 17, he said, for if I do this voluntarily, I have a reward, but if I, against my will, I have a stewardship entrusted to me. What then is my reward? That when I preach the gospel, I may offer the gospel without charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. It is my right that as a gospel preacher to receive material support from you, but it is also my right to uh, not use my right to receive, receive support because I don't want anybody to say that I am uh, preaching the gospel for money. I don't want anyone to say that I'm preaching the gospel for money. Actually, me preaching the gospel, uh, me giving up my right was something that I decided to do on my own and voluntarily. And I don't need any, I don't need to boast about me um, giving, making a sacrifice for the well-being of, of others. I'm not, it, there's nothing for me to boast. I'm just doing this of my own free will is what he's saying. See, the Lord did not require me, he said. He said, the Lord did not require me to do this. Because he's saying in verse 17, for if I do this voluntarily, I have a reward. So Paul is giving up his right to receive material support voluntarily of his own free will. The Lord did not require him to do that. Actually, Jesus said those who preach the gospel should receive financial support from the gospel. And but Paul said, I'm not going to use that right because I don't want anybody to say that I'm preaching for money. So and he could took, he could have took pride in him sacrificing for the well-being. No, he could have said, oh, I am sacrificing for the well-being of others. Uh, I'm supporting myself and I, I'm blessing others uh, of my own free will. But he didn't do that. In verse 16, Paul took pride in what? He didn't took pride that he was sacrificing the other, but he took pride that he is able to preach the gospel. He took pride that he preached the gospel, not um, his sacrifice for the well-being of another. He didn't take pride in that I'm sacrificing, giving up pay, giving up a portion it to sacrifice the other. He didn't boast in that. But what he did boast in is that I have an opportunity to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, preaching and teaching was his calling in life. And he said, I boast and brag about preaching and teaching the word of God and not me sacrificing for the well-being of others. Now, Paul say, woe is me. He said, woe is me. In other words, you know what? I would be in trouble with the Lord Jesus Christ if I don't preach the gospel because that is the call that he have over my life. But not only is it, it, he felt like this is what he's called, but Paul saw it as a privilege, as a privilege to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And also he had a sense of indebtedness to share the gospel message with lost men. He had a sense of indebtedness. And this sense of indebtedness, all believers should have a sense of indebtedness to preach the gospel. Why? Go to Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Romans, no, I'm sorry. Romans 1, verse 14 through 16. Paul had a sense of indebtedness to preach the gospel. And he also saw uh, a, this is as a privilege. And every believer should see sharing his faith as a privilege and as a sense of, have a sense of indebtedness to lost men. Go to Romans 1, verse 14 through 16. In this letter to the Roman, Paul shares his sense of indebtedness to preach the gospel. And why? Verse 14 through 16. I am under obligation. I am under obligation both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise, the educated, 
and to the uneducated. So for my part, I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You see, God have given, entrusted to the, with, to the apostle Paul, he had get, entrusted him with the gospel message. And this gospel message had the power to save a lost person. So what a privilege it is to be part of that. What privilege it is to be part of preaching a gospel that can save a person from spending eternity in the lake of fire. And so Paul had a sense of indebtedness because this gospel, and he was not ashamed of preaching the gospel. He was eager and looking for every opportunity to preach the gospel. You look at the book of Acts, you, you don't see a complacent, a lazy uh, uh, believer in the book of Acts. You see a man that knows that he only have but a short time, and he is doing everything in the midst of sickness and suffering and persecution uh, and health problems. He wanted to get the gospel out because he had this sense of indebtedness to share the gospel that is able to save a lost person and give a lost person a new destiny, and that is heaven and escape the lake of fire. Going back to uh, going back to First Corinthians. So Paul say here that if he did this willingly of his own free we will, he will receive a reward. So in other words, see, God rewards our motives. God reward motives. It is not the quantity of work that God rewards. He looked for the quality of our work. Our work. In other words, what is our motivation for preaching the gospel? See, Paul's motivation for preaching the gospel was not for money. He wasn't preaching the gospel for money. He did not get in ministry just to get rich, that was not his motivation. But he did it of his own free will. And if he did it of his own free will, he said, you will receive a reward. You know, and some of you may have learned this by now, but I am a man who believes in freedom. I believe in freedom. I don't believe in coercing anybody to do anything. Because you only get reward what you willingly want to do. You only get rewarded what you willingly want to do. You can't do I can encourage you to do certain thing that I think is a benefit to your spiritual life. But when you do it of your own free will without coercion, then you get rewarded for that. Because you did it out of your own uh, free will. And I can encourage, but... We can never manipulate or coerce anyone to do anything. If you do anything for the Lord because somebody wants you to do it or you care about what other people think or, 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 or how they're going to accept you or whatever, then that's the wrong motivation. Anything we, we do, we should be motivated from our own free will because we consider it as a privilege and an opportunity to be part of what God is doing. So Paul say in verse 16, I did this willingly. And if I did it willingly of my own free will, my own choice, I will receive a pay from the Lord. I will receive a pay from the Lord. So whatever I do, I do it as unto the Lord and not unto men, because I only get rewarded for that which I do as unto the Lord. I don't get rewarded for that which I do as unto man or to please man or to be accepted by man. Whatever I do, if I do it as unto the law of my own free will without coercion, he say here, I will receive a pay from the Lord. And in verse 17, again, if he preach unwillingly, he would not receive a reward because it would be doing it as a duty instead of a privilege. Verse 18, here we see uh, what then is my reward? Now li listen to Paul's reward. He said, here's my reward, that when I preach the gospel, I may offer the gospel without charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. So I'm not going to use my full right to receive financial support. 
but I'm going to preach the gospel willingly and freely, even without your support. And my reward is what? My reward is the privilege of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Paul saw preaching the gospel as a privilege. Therefore, he preached without looking for money, uh, preached without asking for money. Uh, now, yes, it was his right to receive financial support, but he said, hey, this is a privilege. Do you understand this is a privilege to preach and, and win lost people to Christ, the one that have loved me and died for me and gave himself? What a privilege it is to preach the gospel. What a privilege it is to be part of God's work. People like to feel like, you know, uh, uh, nobody should have to coerce us to serve within the local church. No, it's a privilege. Because by serving within this church, you're going to be a blessing to somebody else. Somebody else is going to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Their spiritual life is going to be blessed. And what a privilege it is. But it always should be out of your own free will and never coercion. Never coercion. You know, I love that song. Say, I go if I have to go. I, if I have to go by myself. <laughs> I don't, it, it's a, a Lee Williams, it's an old gospel hymn. They go, I go if I have to go, if I have to go by myself. And we all should have that attitude that I will serve God because it is a privilege to serve him, even if I have to serve him by myself. See, Paul had the right as an apostle and a right to receive support, but he gave up this right to eat in a pagan temple because it will benefit another believer. But he also gave up his right to receive financial support because he did not want anyone to say he was preaching uh, for money. He considered preaching the gospel as a privilege. You know, and individuals who serve Christ and with the mindset that this is a privilege that God has given me. This is, he don't, actually, he don't even need me. <laughs> he don't even need me, but he chose to allow me to be part or what he is doing, what a, and then I still get bled just by, you know, allowing him to work in me and through me. So Paul was willing to sacrifice his salary and his rights of an apostle to further the gospel. And he considered furthering the gospel his reward. Because think about the joy it gives Paul to see people get saved and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus, escape the lake of fire. Christians should also have this same attitude. Refrain, refrain from whatever you got to refrain from if it means you would not damage another believer's relationship with God. You know, uh, and also, uh, uh, and sometimes that means refraining from certain things so that you may further the work of God because God calls us to do this as Paul did it. Let's keep reading verse 19. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all. He said, I am free from all men, but I made myself a slave to all so that I might win the more. So being a slave here, Paul did not live to please himself. He lived to please his master Jesus, and he lived to bring God's blessing to others. So whatever I got to do to win more, to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, I would do it. And I do it of my own free will because I consider it a privilege to be part of what God is doing. Verse 20, he said, to the Jews, I became a Jew so that I might win Jew to those who are under the law as under the law, though not being myself under the law, so that I might win those who are under the law. So those who are without law as without law though not being without law to God, but under the law of Christ, so that I might win those who are without law. Paul said, I am willing to do whatever I got to do if it means lost people will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He said, to the weak, I became weak. So in other words, if, if someone is weak and, and feel like eating food sacrificed to idol is going to lead them back down their, their old lifestyle, he's well, I'm going to become weak. I'm going to restrain from that belief. I'm going to restrain from the same thing that this weak believer is refraining from 
because he feel like this would damage his walk with God. So I'm going to refrain from that which he think would damage his walk with God. If that means that I would bring blessing to that believing in Jesus Christ. He said, I become all things to all men so that I might by all means save some of them. See, Paul was not a self-centered Christian. He was willing to give up his freedom and his right to certain things if it means to bring lost people to Christ, if it means to be a blessing to other believers. Verse 23, I do all things for the sake of the gospel message so that I may become a partaker of it. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receive the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the game exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wealth, but we are imperishable. Therefore, I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beat in the air, but I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to other, I myself will not be disqualified. So in a nutshell, Paul is encouraging these Corinthians, refrain from anything that will hinder the growth and the walk of other believers. Do whatever it takes to be a blessing to the other believer. Even though drinking, he didn't say this here, but this is just illustration. If drinking wine in the midst of someone who is trying to overcome drinking, if it mean me with training will, incur, will, will keep him from falling, then I'm going to refrain from it because it could lead another believer into uh, sin. So, and also we're to be willing of our own free will to preach the gospel uh, and do whatever we're called to do in the work of the Lord in our own free will, if it mean it would bring lost people to Christ because the gospel has the power to say we should always be have our antennas up and see ways that we could give up something for the benefit of others. We'll start right here and we'll continue um, on next week with chapter 10. I'm, I'm not going to go to chapter 10 today, but we'll continue on next week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for Paul is such an exemplary role model for all of us. Here you have a man that have the right to receive support, but he gave up that right for the well-being of others. And we thank you so much um, for our Savior, Jesus Christ, who also uh, lived this same exemplary lifestyle. Jesus Christ was willing to give up the glories of heaven uh, to go to the cross for our benefit. And Father, help us all uh, uh, follow the example of Jesus and follow the example of Paul and give up what we need to give up, if it means to be a blessing um, to others. Keep our minds and heart until we meet again. In Christ's name, amen.